How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, this is a popcorn video. Stop everything you're doing. Go get what you got to get. I'm already set up. I got my, you know, grape juice, ice, lemon, all that. So anyway. You see uh, ex-Sheriff David Clark's eye? He been crying. He butt hurt. Oh yeah, he butt hurt. So, y'all remember the last video that I showed the royal family? They were showing improvements in the jail that he was supposed to keep secure well he's up in his feelings now and he's angry with the acting sheriff well yes he's real angry with him and i got a treat for the royal family oh yes juicy 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 so anyway to get the royal family up to speed let's first Listen to this little news clip in here so we can get everything set up. Sheriff has been on a public relations bin showing off changes at the county jail after seven inmate deaths in the last two years, including the dehydration of Terrell Thomas. You must have recognized some things prior to becoming sheriff. Did you? Were you prevented from making those changes earlier? Everything rises and falls on leadership. Monday, Schmidt appeared on WISN Radio's Dan O'Donnell Show. Turns out Schmidt's predecessor was listening. I think it was a political cheat shot. I think it was political opportunism. Clark called the radio show to suggest Schmidt was responsible for problems at the jail. I did not do the day-to-day -day operations of the Milwaukee County Jail. That was done by then Inspector Richard Schmidt, and you ought to have just admit that. And I had asked for the removal of the second in command in the jail multiple times. He refused to do it. I'm not fighting with Sheriff David Clark. I have no intentions of going after him whatsoever. It would be a wise idea, the best. but that's cool. Schmidt stood his ground. The leadership did not accomplish what I felt was appropriate. I changed it. I fixed it. No one else did. That's all I had. Thanks. Acting Sheriff Schmidt declined 12 News requests to discuss the radio showdown. Former Sheriff Clark did not respond to 12 News requests. In the newsroom, Colleen Henry, WISN, 12 News. And we asked the governor about problems at the jail today. Here's what he had to say. I think the independent review suggests uh, reasons other than the two of them are related to the concerns at the, uh, the jail. The governor also says he does plan to appoint a Milwaukee County Sheriff in coming days. The Sheriff Schmidt told us he's expecting to remain in the job at least through the end of the year. All right, my royal family, let's take that down quickly. So anyway, they didn't got into it because the sheriff is up in his feelings. That's why his eye looked like that because he'd been crying, and he'd been lying, too. So anyway, my royal family, I got a treat for you. I found the entire uh, segment to this radio show. It's nine minutes, and we're going to listen to... Um, sometimes I slip up and say sheriff, sheriff, but ex-sheriff tell his lies and we're going to listen to the exchange between both of them oh yeah so kick your heels up Ooh, i love stuff like this so anyway let me get it popping last segment we talked with acting milwaukee county sheriff richard schmidt who outlined his efforts at the milwaukee county jail joining us now former milwaukee county sheriff David Clark, who took exception to some of Sheriff Schmidt's comments on this. And, sir, thanks so much for listening, for calling in. And I think uh, all of our listeners want to know, what have you been up to before we get into your response to Sheriff Schmidt? 
Oh, thanks, Dan. Dan, you know, I listen to you guys every day. Uh, my heart is, is still in Milwaukee because it's my hometown, so I get a little Milwaukee taste by listening to Jay, you, uh, Rush, Mark, Vicky. Uh, down there every day, but anyway, things are going well. Good, uh, good. A consulting business and uh, got a couple clients out here in Washington D.C., so that's where I'm spending most of my time. Well, excellent. It's good to hear. Now, you took exception with some of the things that Sheriff Schmidt said with respect to the jail. The sheriff, uh, Sheriff Schmidt, and I've got to be real tough saying Sheriff Schmidt quickly on the air because if I leave out that yeah, you gotta M, be careful. It's, it's a tough. <laughs> I don't want the FCC breathing down my neck. But you, you took exception to what he said about uh, hiring the best people, cleaning up the jail, that sort of thing. You felt that it was an unfair attack on your leadership. Yeah, I do. I think it was a political cheat shot. I think it was political opportunism. Look, I left uh, Inspector, then Inspector Schmidt now, and I'm sure Schmidt in charge. Um, when I retired on September 1st, I'm the one that elevated him to a second-in-command post. Um, and, and I think, you know, he's a decent guy. He really is. I wouldn't have put him in that position, but I don't like when he takes uh, political cheap shots now that I'm gone to enhance his own image. But the fact is that he was in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the jail when I was there. That was his major role. He was to keep me apprised. Some of the, the terms he used, uh, everything rises and falls on leadership. That was all part of my leadership training, so I'm glad that he was paying attention in those training sessions. But he never brought those things to my attention. That was his job. He gave me regular reports. You know, you you you, you put people in these positions to run the day to day operations because, like uh, Rich Smith said, it's a huge operation, and so you have to have quality people. Everybody who was in a management or supervisory position in the jail came at Rich Smith's uh, recommendations. So the fact that he won't accept that responsibility, he did not mention that. Uh, when Sheriff Clark was here, I was in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the jail, and I never bought any of this stuff. So you're saying, attention. hold on, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you are saying that Richard Schmidt never told you about any of the issues at the jail for, uh, I mean, this was, this was going on, what, the Terrell Thomas death was April of, was that 16 or 17? So this this is more than a year, I, I think. He right. never said anything about it to you? No, and actually there's affidavits. I'm on uh, depositions in uh, certain in issues going on in the jail that resulted in lawsuits where uh, I was deposed and also I swore to affidavits that the day-to-day -day operation of the jail was not done by me. It was done by then Inspector Schmidt. So... Uh, if he's going to try to uh, back out of that, he's going to have a hard time doing that. And I just wish he just, you know, when I, when I um, uh, handed him over the reins, I said, hey, take this, do what you want with it in terms of you can take, excuse me, take it in any direction you want. Um, that's what the predecessor is supposed to do. So I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with him calling people in and doing all these inspections. But he should have then been doing that and recommended that to me when I was his boss and he did not do it. And that's all I want to say about it. It's that I think it's nothing more than a, a political cheap shot. Well, sir, I mean, this is, with all due respect, a, a pretty serious allegation that he was kind of keeping things from you when he should have been reporting up the chain the, the systemic problems at the jail. Are you saying that he knew that the problems were this severe and intentionally didn't report to you or that he didn't no, know? No, not that... at all. Oh, okay. No, not okay. at all. I said he did not bring that to my attention. So I'm not saying he knew and, and kept it from me. I mean, hell, I would have fired him if I'd have caught him doing that. But, uh, and you can't do that with a, uh, and then inspector because they serve at the pleasure of the, of the sheriff. Sure. Like I said, I thought he was a, he, and I still do. He's a great guy. Uh, I think he has great ability to handle that position, I wouldn't have left him there. I wouldn't have done that to the people in Milwaukee County. I left him to left the people in incompetent hands. But at the same time, uh, he shouldn't look back and, and take swipes and cheap shots. He should just move forward. And, you know, it's okay to let people know what he's going to do. And that's important to communicate with the public. Uh, but to bring up all these problems now, well, but as if the National Institute of Corrections had to let him know, no, he should have known because, he was responsible for the day-to-day. -day. In other words, he should have been there every day. He should have been doing this inspecting. That's why his title was inspector, and then you're supposed to brief the sheriff. And he never brought this stuff 
to my attention. That's what I'm saying. Well, sir, I mean, to be fair, though, it, 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 and I was talking to uh, Sheriff Schmidt, he did not mention you. And I, I sort of took it, I, I'll be totally honest with you, I didn't think that, uh, I didn't immediately put your name associated with this. I thought he was talking about, what is it, the, the major, the woman who was, in fact, charged with misconduct in office, that there were actually criminal charges. I, I felt as though he was referring to this, people in high-level positions who are actually criminally negligent in their duties. So to be fair, right, I, I'm not sure he was referring to you. Well, here's the thing, though. No, because, see, unlike what he did, I take full responsibility for what was going on there. Whether I knew about it or not, when you're the sheriff, when you're the guy or the girl, it all falls on you. That's an aspect of leadership, too. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is he did not inform me. So if he's talking about Nancy Evans, he put Nancy Evans in that position. In other words, he made that recommendation to me, and I said, sounds good to me. Sure. I'm at your recommendation, let's do it. Because you well, doing my sir, sir, hold on. I, I'm sorry. I actually have, Rich, and this is sort of <laughs> unusual, but we have Sheriff Richard Schmidt on the phone, and I, I guess I, I want to give, give him a chance to answer what you said, if that's okay. Yes. So, so, Sheriff Schmidt, if, if you want to talk directly to... Uh, Sheriff Clark, I feel like one of those old-time phone operators here. You're on with Sheriff Clark. Uh, Sheriff Schmidt, do you want to answer what Sheriff Clark was saying? Yeah, first of all, I wish nothing but the best for uh, Sheriff Clark, former Sheriff Clark. And you're absolutely right. The last thing I would ever do is take any kind of a shot at him. I've never used his name in the last seven months. I have no intentions of going after him. The thing that I absolutely have to take exception with is not knowing about the death or the deaths. I mean, good night. The media jumped on it. Everybody knew about it. Uh, his uh, adjutant inspector, Ed Bailey, very much made these things known to him. So, uh, you know, I, I understand what he's saying, and, I, and I'm, the last thing I want to do is get into an argument with uh, uh, David Clark. I love the guy. I served under his pleasure, and he's absolutely right. He's the one who gave me the career I had, and I have nothing but respect for that. The issue all is... All right, that's all fine and dandy. That's all fine and dandy, but all I really wanted to bring out was that you were responsible and in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of that jail for the time that I was there, for most of it anyway. And I just mentioned that you didn't bring this stuff to my attention. I also mentioned that there are affidavits, and I'm under, I've been under sworn testimony and depositions and swore that I did not do the day-to-day -day operations of the Milwaukee County, County Jail that was done by then Inspector Richard Schmidt. And you ought to have just admit that. Then we can all move on. But there was all well, happening. Sheriff Schmidt? The last, the last thing I'll respond to is I was absolutely over the day-to-day -day operations of the entire Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. The bottom yeah. line is we had jail administrators, we had captains, we had uh, assistant jail commanders. I had asked for the but removal. In your recommendation. Of, I had asked, excuse me, I had asked for the removal of the second-in-command in the jail multiple times that fell on deaf ears. The leadership did not accomplish what I felt was appropriate. I changed it. I fixed it. No one else did. That's all I have. Thanks. Well, you okay, wait, hold on. To remove those people, and you never made that, you never, you, you may have made that recommendation, but you had the authority to do it, and you didn't do it. When did I not, how often, I should say, did I not go along with one of your recommendations, Rich? It's just simply no, not true. You, I had recommended that multiple times. You refused to do it, and, I mean, you know, it's a he said, she said now, but it's unfortunate. But, again, I'm not fighting with Sheriff David Clark. I have no intentions of going after him whatsoever. It would be a wise idea, but that's cool. Now. Well, that's the end of that exchange. Clark is a fucking liar. And he talks all that gobbledygook and all about leadership. But then when you get into the fine details, then he passed the buck. Now, we have to realize this man been cleaning up his shit. And he butthurt. He butt hurt because he is being exposed and he don't 
like it. And then he jumps the gun because he listens to him on the radio, never mention his name, but he all up in his feelings. What you up in your feelings for? You're sitting up here with that red eye because you've been crying. I should have hit you in that motherfucker again so it could be swole up. That's what I should have did. But your nigga moment is coming slowly but surely. And then the way you think you're going to get away with it is pass the buck and say, oh, I didn't know. Ignorance is bliss. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. So one minute you want to be professional, and then the next minute you don't want to be professional. You want to play dumb. Oh, yeah, you want to play dumb. That ain't going to work. And then they're taking a detailed inventory of all the shit you have left. You know what I'm going to have to do, my royal family? I'm going to have to make a special playlist for Clark's shit. So you can, so because some people are coming new to this channel to really fully understand he in a lot of shit. And if you would have been listening closely, he's even had implied that he's in litigation too. Because people died in that jail. And you heard what the acting sheriff said. He would make rec rec recommendations and he basically blew him off. So anyway, my royal family, I thought that would be a nice treat to hear the exchange from the coon himself. So anyway, my royal family, render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, I say, that's what your ass get, coon.